So how many entrepreneurs in the room? Right. How many of you, your business depends on money? It's an interesting phenomenon. A guy tweeted to me this morning, and he's like, you talk about money so much. I'm like, dude, it's kind of important. And he's like, yeah, but it's not the most important thing. I'm like, if you're in business, it's the most important thing. Because if you have no money, you can't grow your business. Would you agree? And he said, yeah, but money won't make you happy. I said, not having money won't make you happy either, pal. Okay? I tried poverty. I tried being broke. It was a disaster of an experiment. How many have been through the disaster experiment? Okay? Or just enough money. How about just enough money? You can't grow your business with just enough money. So what I'm here to talk to you about for the next 45 minutes, and I promise you it will go fast, okay, is how you grow your business, how you get in front of more people, how you get those people to want to do business with you now. I've grown multiple businesses with no money. I've never taken a loan from the government. I've never used banks to borrow money. And I've taken ideas and concepts because I didn't have any money. I've taken ideas and concepts, brought them to the marketplace, and pushed them, pushed them into the marketplace until somebody said, I see value, I give you money. Okay? If you're taking notes, you want to write this down. When value exceeds price, people give money. When value exceeds price, people buy things. Houses are not selling yet in America because the price is still above what is the perceived value. Automobiles in America are selling because value exceeds the price, right? Blueberries are selling. At some price, they'll sell. At some higher price, they'll quit selling. It's like, how do I make people want that blueberry, that house, that car, that chiropractory adjustment, the package, uh, the package at the chiropractor, the, the, the implant, the $14,000 implant because I want pretty teeth? How do I get that done? How do I get somebody to buy your marketing package or your social media package? What do I do with Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn and Google Plus and YouTube? What do I do with them? Or are they just problems for me? Okay? I didn't have a Twitter account 15 months ago. I was just rated the top 10 business coaches on Twitter and the number one sales expert on Twitter for 2012. Now, I'm not bragging to you. I'm telling you, how do you push into a space that you've never been in and then dominate it? That's what you want to go for, folks. You do not want to go for competition in this environment. How many have been trained this? You've been taught this. You've been educated. Competition's healthy. How many have been told that? Competition is not healthy. You do not want to compete. You want to dominate a sector. Apple Computer, Coca-Cola, Exxon, Google. What do, they, what do they all have in common? Pure domination, not competition. I spent 17 years getting a formal education. Competition's good. Competition's healthy. For who? Imagine if you were the only marketing company in the world. Is that better than having millions of marketing companies? Exactly. I, I want to own the sector. I want to own the sector. I want somebody, when somebody thinks about sales training, I want them to equate Grant Cardone. And whatever I have to spend to get there, I'll spend to get there. I want to own the sector completely. I don't want to compete in it. So one way you could own a sector is by tweeting, okay? If you're not tweeting or Facebooking or YouTubing, okay, or using LinkedIn, if you aren't using these free mediums to communicate to the world, you're not in the game, man. You're not in the game, okay? Now, this morning, if you look at my Twitter account today, because this is more than just about selling and closing a transaction. If I don't have anybody to pay attention to me, I can't sell or close. Would you agree? Look, there's nobody here, man. Hey, man, I'm a good salesman. I can shut you down right now. Who am I talking to? Myself? I need people. Obscurity, obscurity is the biggest problem your business has. There is no bigger problem than obscurity. It's not money. It's not financing. It's not price. It's not value. It's not package. It is one thing, obscurity. All those media programs that you saw me on this morning, they all tell you that there's not enough money, the banks aren't loaning, consumers don't have confidence, people aren't healthy, the economy's in trouble. Dude, none of those are the problem. The problem is nobody knows you. I don't know you, man. I don't know you. Who are you? 
right? Price doesn't matter at this point. Value doesn't matter at this point. The package, the offer, the problems, I don't know you. If you don't know me, you can't buy my books. Obscurity is a bigger problem than money, okay? So I'll go broke just trying to get out of obscurity, and I'm going to use these free mediums to do so. So this is my point. If you look at my Twitter account this morning, which I can look from on this phone. How many of you have a smartphone? Okay, if you don't have a smartphone, what kind of phone do you have? You got a dumb phone. No offense, it's one of the two. You got a dumb phone, you got a smartphone. Now, some of you got a smartphone, you don't know how to use it. Okay, now, I drove from L.A. this morning, and all I did was beat this thing up because I want to make Saturday my slave. I wake up every morning, Monday is going to be my slave. As opposed to, I'm going to be a slave to Monday. See the difference? I want to master the day. I want to own time. I don't want to manage it. I'm not interested in managing time. I'm interested in creating time. Okay? So on the way down here, I'm using this Twitter account. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I'm sorry. 13 in one hour. 13 people are mentioning me on this Twitter feed in, the first, in just the last 60 minutes. Why? Why? What am I trying to do? What am I trying to accomplish? Two things. I want to get out of obscurity with people, and I want to dominate their thinking. And any business, it doesn't matter what the business is. I'm a chiropractor. I need to dominate the sector. I want to own the sector. Most of the time, I'm advertising not for customers. I'm advertising to put my competition on their heels. Right? I've written, let me see, let me see where my books are at. One, two, three, four. I wrote these four books since the Lehman's collapsed. Since the Lehman's collapsed. That was what, 2008? I didn't write these books to make money. I wrote these books to put my competition on their heels. When other people were contracting, all I thought was, oh, expand into it. While they contract, this is your shot at domination. Would you agree? Because I had a natural thing going for me. My competitors were backing up. While they backed up, I just advanced because they opened the door for me. But you see, the media, the media in 2007, 2008 were telling you what? Save money. Don't spend. Contract. The world's coming to an end. And everybody started backing up, and that's why the economy contracted. But Apple Computer, what did they do? What, did, what, did, what does Mark Zuckerberger say over at, uh, at Facebook? Spend the money, control the space. Spend your money, control the space. Invest your money, control the space. Dominate the sector. Money is only for one thing, to own the space, right? I got some money in my pocket right here. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. It's no good. It goes down in value every day. Can't get enough of it. How many of you can't get enough of it? Once you get enough of it, you find out you don't have enough of it. Okay? There's no shortage of it. How many agree there's no shortage? Dude, every time there's a shortage, oh, Ben boy, Benny, Benny just starts printing. There's no shortage of money on, on planet Earth. But how many people do you know, how many people do you know that think money is a shortage? There's, there's a shortage of money. The, the clients that you call on every day, hey, my package is 1100 bucks, and he's like, oh, my God, $1,100? Oh, my God, I can't even imagine spending that much money. How many of you got clients like that? And then you go into an agreement with it. Yeah, you're right. Maybe my price is too high. We should lower our price. How many of you got employees telling you that? Let's lower our prices. Why don't you just freaking close the doors? You can't get your prices any lower than they are. Okay? It doesn't make sense to get your prices any lower. What, it ma what makes sense is to build value because you can't grow your business, folks, if you don't sell and close. Would you agree? Okay? I lower my price. Do people buy it? You ever seen you, you lower the price and they still don't make a decision? So I know this. In my business, I, it doesn't matter what I'm doing. I'm selling a wristband. I got this little wristband, okay? We sell them for like five bucks or something. There you go. It's tough. It says no negativity on one side, and it says be positive on the other. A lot of you need this. Would you agree? Okay? So that's a $2 band. 
I've sold $70 million real estate. I've been in a transaction. The property was mine. Three lawyers, three real estate guys on their side, two accountants, and I'm by myself in a room. First thing they do is they sit down. Everybody says, hello, hello. We pass business cards. And the first thing they tell me is this. Your property's overpriced. See, it doesn't matter whether it's two bucks or 70 million. How many agree? They're going to say what? Whether I'm getting a haircut, right, for 20 bucks or 50 bucks or 200 bucks, or whether I'm buying a purse for $12 or buying one for 1200 This group looks at me and says, your price is too high. I said, no, you knew that before you called the meeting. You knew that before you brought your freaking army in here. Now, we're going to do this deal or not? Because I don't have any more money to give you. Now, I want you to write this down because I'm going to use this in every transaction I'm involved in. Somewhere in the transaction, when we enter the negotiations, I've sold the product, built the value, solved the problem. Somewhere when we start negotiating, whether that's two minutes or 20 minutes, I'm going to lay this line out. I'm going to say, I don't have any money left to give you. Okay, I'm going to make it clear. I'm going to literally get altitude it's called getting altitude in the negotiations. I don't have any money left to give you, okay? If you're talking about a discount, more of a discount, if you're talking about a lower price, to get this package, to get this solution, to solve your problem, hey, what are you going to tell them right now? I don't have any more money to give you, okay? Everybody try this. I don't have any more money to give you. See, if you don't close that door, they're going to keep trying to open that door. Would you agree? But you got to get sold, folks. you got to get completely sold on your offer, your product, your service. What is it you're selling? Everybody in this room is in sales. Unfortunately, in America, the word selling has become a bad word. Okay? But you can't get away from it. Would you agree? You're the dentist. Do you need to sell? Man, I want to fix my teeth, man. How much is it going to be? How long have you wanted to fix your teeth? My whole life. I mean, since the moment I got teeth, I've been wanting to fix my teeth. Okay, I mean, I got teeth going this way, teeth going this way. I got them going back. They're ugly. I need new teeth. And then you tell the guy, it's 14 grand, and what does he say? Oh, my God. $14,000. There's no way I can afford that. And then the person pitching, the, presenting the product, the solution, the implant, says what? What do we have to do? What can we do? What price could you afford? What's your budget? Dude, all those are wrong things to say. Would you agree? Same thing for those of you who are selling marketing. You're going in and putting a package together, and the client says, that's more than we're spending now. Where do you need to be? What can we do? You turn yourself into a victim. Why don't you just go stand on the 405 and say, hey, run over me? Okay? Come on, man. Hit me, man. See, first thing you have to do is you have to be completely, I have to be completely sold on my product or service. Completely. I have to understand that if I'm asking this much money for my product or service, my product or service is worth this much money. Or this much. Okay? When somebody offers you $1,100, let's say your package is $1,500 and they offer you eleven. dollars What did they just tell you your, your product is worth? No. They didn't tell you it was worth 1100 If a guy goes into the bookstore in Dallas, Texas at the airport and buys this book for 30 bucks, what did he tell me it was worth to him? More than 30 More than 30 Okay, you want to write this down. Every offer you get made, every offer that is made to you represents whatever the offer was. I'll give you $3 million for the property. That means he thinks it's worth more than $3 million. Nobody offers what they think something is worth. I paid X dollars for this watch. I wanted the watch more than I wanted the money. Right? I give a homeless guy 50 cents. What is it worth for me to give him 50 cents? It's worth more than 50 cents. Or I wouldn't have given it to him. You get it? Do you understand that? I wanted him to go away more than I wanted my 50 cents. That's, that's the reason people give people money. You're, you're not charitable. Oh, I'm helping a guy out. Dude, you gave him a dollar. You didn't help him out. You want to help him out? Give him 500 bucks. 
Okay, don't be acting like a philanthropist. Oh, I'm so good to people. Dude, you gave the guy a quarter. You know, I care about people. Come on, good dude, you don't care about anybody. Shit, you're trying to get rid of him. Tell the truth, man. At least tell the truth. Like when I go into a selling situation, I tell people the truth. I don't let them sell their program to me. Oh, that's more than we can afford. Okay. So what are we going to do to work it out, man? It's a solution for you. It's going to create more business for you. If you keep thinking it's more than you can afford, your business is going to stay small. I show a client recently a, a package. It's an $1,800 package. The guy says, but I'm a little guy. Yeah, and I ain't Obama. You want some food stamps? You want some food stamps to go with the offer, dude? What, what do you think? Who do you, I'm in business, bro. Okay? I'm fi it's a $1,500 package. If you've got four people, it's $1,500. If you've got 40 people, it's $1,500. The fact that you've, you've decided to stay small ain't my problem. It's your problem. I'm trying to get you to freaking 40 people. You want to do this or not, baby? Let's roll. Huh? You see, because you, but see, you guys don't press like that. You know why? Because you're talking to one person. You're not filling your pipeline up. That's why I'm telling you, dude, you gotta, you got you to gotta use these terminals. you got to use these gifts these people have given you. These gifts, gifts, Twitter, Facebook, okay, these are gifts. These are some of the best things I have ever been offered in my business. I have three Facebook pages. A Facebook page didn't exist over a year ago. It's got 75,000 people following it. It'll probably be 80,000 by the time I finish this seminar this morning. That Twitter link, that Twitter page did not exist 15 months ago, there's 100, I don't know, 206,000 people following me on Twitter, okay? I owe it to those people to push, communicate information. So twice an hour, all day long today, somebody's going to get a tweet. But you're bothering people. You're tweeting too much. Go away. Disappear. Dude, if you don't like my delivery, you're not going to buy from me anyway. Some of you in the room have already decided you don't like me. I'm too aggressive for you. Okay, then we agree on something. <laughs> Look, if you don't like me, you're not going to do business with me. Let's determine that quick. Would you agree? If you're going to take an ass whipping, take one quick. Find out quick, right? You don't like me? Congratulations. Shit, there's been times in my life where I didn't like myself. But I still need to communicate. Would you agree? I still need to get attention. Because if you don't get attention, you're done. Okay, four steps. It's not in my PowerPoint, so I want you to write these down. Four steps. Number one, this is, just label this success. If you want to be successful, you must go through these four steps. I didn't know this until I was 51 years old. I'm 54 years old. I learned this right after the collapse of Lehman's, Okay. Four things you must do, you have to do to become successful, regardless of your product or service or whatever you're doing. Number one, you must get attention. You have to get attention. Hey, hey, hey. Got your attention, didn't I? It doesn't matter whether you're, you're, you're a homeless guy, you know, panhandling, or you're selling a $70 million deal. Got to get people's attention. Everybody agree? Got to get it. Hey, hey, hey. You watching me, man? Hey. I'm selling a condo in Tucson, Arizona. The, I'm selling the woman. The woman's in complete communication with me. She's talking to me. We're talking. Her husband's sitting 36 inches from her. He won't even look at me. I'm one minute into the presentation. I'm like, hey, what's happening, man? What's happening, dude? What's up? What's up? You don't look at me. You don't talk to me. You don't listen to me. Your, your eyes are glazing over. You look like you're unconscious. What's happening? Huh? Because the truth is, if he doesn't talk to me now, I'm losing the deal either way. If I'm going to lose the deal, I'm losing it on my terms, not his terms. Okay? Write this down as a side note. If you're going to lose the deal, lose it on your terms. Don't lose it on their terms. You're going to lose the deal. So what? I just want to lose it on my terms. Is that too aggressive? Not if you want to dominate your sector. It's not. Not if you want altitude, it's not. Anybody can do this once you're sold. How many believe this? If you're completely sold on your product and service as a value, you could do this. You would be aggressive. If you're not sold, you're not going to be aggressive. 
Oh, but I'm not an aggressive type. You are when you're sold. Okay? Remember when you were three years old? You were aggressive then, weren't you? How many of you got kids? Shit. Huh? Hey, give me that right now. I want it right now. Kids two and a half years old. Kids don't sell. Kids close. <laughs> they don't bother with selling. I got, a, I got a three-year-old, right? My little girl's like, I want a jelly bean right now. I'm like, baby, baby, baby. She started crying right out the gate. Yeah, give me the kid, damn it. Give it to me. I'm like, dude, dude, slow it down a little bit, baby. You got to go through some steps, man. Like, don't go straight for my throat, man. Just set me up. Smile at me. Papa, you're the best. Give me a jelly bean or I'll tear this freaking place apart. But you know what the kids got and that I would never want to get rid of her in her is that uh, everybody's got that. What happened to it? You lost it. Would you agree? You lost it somewhere. Because when you got into school, they sat you in a chair for 50 minutes and said, don't move, don't talk. And if you got a question, raise your hand. Your mom told you, don't put your finger in the electrical socket. They had a swimming pool at the house. And rather than teaching you how to swim, they put a freaking gate around it to keep you out of it. Everything was stop. Your parents taught you, don't touch yourself. <laughs> Before that, they said, don't touch that. Don't touch that. Don't touch that. Don't touch that. That's not yours. And then they added, quit touching yourself. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> it's mine. <laughs> Shit, you were telling me not to touch this little guy over here because it's his property, okay? Now I can't even touch my own damn property. And you know what? I'm going to grow up. I'm going to be 40 years old. And I, I'm, no wonder people are walking around like this. <laughs> I can't touch anything, shit. I can't reach. Heaven, heaven forbid if anybody tells anybody who you are, attention. First thing you got to do is get attention. The Kardashians are great at this. They're unbelievable. When Kim gets her divorce, what, six or seven months ago, I told my wife, I can't wait to see what she does next. The chick is brilliant. People hate her guts, don't they? She is freaking brilliant. She takes, she's a magician. She takes nothing and turns it into money. That's what you need to learn how to do. That's what magicians do, right? Hey, I take nothing, an idea. An idea is nothing. Would you agree? Except what? An idea, which is unbelievable. And for anybody to diminish what that chick does, you're, you're confused if you do. You're confused. You're confused because you want to do what she does. Okay? First thing she has to do is get attention. Look at my big ass. Huh? Spank this. Anything to get attention. Why? She's trying to burst through the noise in the universe. It's a noisy universe. Would you agree? It's a big unit. There should be 900 people here today, but there's not. Why? Because they got caught up in the noise. They didn't get caught up in the price of the ticket or the $189 room. Those are the excuses they made not to come here because they got, oh, my kids, it's noise. I couldn't get away. I couldn't get a sitter. It's noise, man. Oh, my gosh, we don't have the money because Fox TV convinced you you don't have the money. Fox, CNN, CNBC, MSNBC, those are the people you're competing with, not, not another direct mail company. Your biggest competition is Anderson Cooper on CNN, Susie Orman. Susie, you know what Susie does every day? Don't spend money. Don't buy a car. Don't lease a car. Don't rent a car. <laughs> Get rid of your husband. Everything says what? Back up. Retreat. What does Dave Ramsey say? All debt. My friend Dave Ramsey, all debt is bad debt. All debt. Dude, Coca-Cola's got 14 times more debt than they have revenue. Caterpillar has 16 times more debt than they have revenue. You want to grow your business? You need debt. Right? I got an American Express card in my pocket. I put all my expenses on this card, okay? Is that bad? Debt's not my problem. Income's my problem. Would you agree? The more income I have, I can handle debt. Guys, like, I put too much money on my card. No, you didn't, dude. You don't make enough money. 
right? You want to increase your income, which means I got to sell and produce. You can't grow your business without selling and producing, without closing transactions. It's impossible. You guys want to be business owners. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a CEO. I'm the banker. I'm the comptroller. Dude, you're a salesperson. That's what you are. You just need to call yourself what you are and make every department responsible for revenue. Get everybody pitching your product or service. Get so sold that everybody, including the non-salespeople, are selling, promoting, marketing, growing your business by closing deals. This is a training poll that we did. This is a sales training poll we did on LinkedIn. You can do surveys on LinkedIn for free, okay? It says, in which area would you like to get more training? Number one category, staying motivated. How many agree that's a big problem in your company? Just keeping people motivated every day, excited and focused. Number two, steps to the sale. Only 8% of the people responded and said, I need to know how to handle the steps. Number three, product knowledge. Where do most companies spend all their time training people? Product, 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 product. Dude, that, that's not your problem, okay? This is what people told us. 1,100 people answered this poll. Handling objections, 25%. Closing the deal, 23%. If you take closing the deal, handling objections, and attitude, they make up 86% of every, that's where I need help. Rules of closing. Look, number one rule of closing. Okay, let, let me finish those four steps first. I know you, we were mid that, okay? Number one, attention. Everybody agree? You got to get attention? How could I do that? Radio, TV. I could be become an expert. I could write a blog. I could tweet. I could put something on Facebook. I could go knock on a guy's door. I could follow somebody home. I spent three hours working with them. They didn't make a decision with me. They leave my office and they go home. I follow them home. Would that get attention? Well, I could never do that. Why, why, why couldn't you do that? That's what, made the, that's what makes an entrepreneur an entrepreneur. Okay, number one, attention. Number two, you must get criticism. You must get criticism. You have to get criticism. Criticism is, is, is it's a via. You have to go through this door. Most people want to avoid criticism. Would you agree? I need criticism. You can't, you can't get the positive without getting the criticism. If there's, if there's a 1,000 people in the room, I need 500 to criticize me and 500 to love me. Okay? Like, like 311 million people live in the United States. My goal right now over the next 20 years is to get 150 million people to hate my guts. Because if I can get 150 million people in the United States of America to hate my guts, the United States of America will rain treasure on me. Number one, attention. Number two, criticism. Number three, haters. You got to get some haters. You need haters. No school is going to teach you how to get a hater. Okay? High school, elementary school, colleges, what do they teach? You want to be the most popular person. No, you want haters. Okay? The companies that are hated are the companies that are exploding. The people that are hated are the people that explode. If I don't hate you, if nobody hates you, nobody knows you. So the reason I'll tweet, for instance, when we started, we had this, uh, uh, th that newsletter that I sent out, okay? We sent it out every week. We were hitting people once a month, and we started getting complaints. You send stuff out too much. My office came to me. We went to twice a month. They came to me. We have more people pulling off of the newsletter. Good. Double up again. Why? I want haters. Okay? So we started sending out one every week, and then I started a Twitter account. I actually had people write, Grant Cardone, social media people, Grant Cardone is an example of what not to do with social media. I said, freaking, just multiply. <laughs> just increase it. Okay, we were doing like four tweets a day. Good, do two an hour. Why? Because I want my competition hating my guts. I want them talking about me. I mean, I don't really want hate people to hate me. You understand what I'm saying about? I want them so, so energized that they actually start pushing me. They start promoting me. And the fourth thing is admiration. That's where you want to be. I mean, ultimately, you want admiration, right? You want people admiring you. How do people admire you? They buy your products. I admire you so much, I want to give you my money. 
I admire what you're doing so much, I give you money. How does the charity work? How, do, how does the cancer society work? I admire what you're doing so much, I'm going to give you money and get nothing for it. Same thing. It's all the same, folks. It doesn't matter what you're selling. Insurance, chiropractory, marketing campaigns, social media support. You're selling tickets to a seminar. It doesn't matter. Your kid's, your kid's selling lemonade. It doesn't matter. Can I get attention? Can I stop that car? Can I get them to criticize me? Hey, your lemonade's too much. Look, if you're going to tell me it's too much, let's make it 20 bucks. Right? You're the homeless guy. Is he going to get attention? Maybe. Most homeless guys don't. They sit on the curb. You pull up to the light, he's too far away for you to help him. How many of you have seen that before? And he's sitting there with a sign. And you're like, I'd help you if you were closer. If you weren't so lazy, I might actually help you. See, but that's how businesses operate too. They open their doors in the morning, they turn their lights on, and then nothing else happens. You've got to push into it, okay? So here's some rules of closing a transaction. Because if I get attention, and I get criticism, and I get haters, and then I get people saying, dude, you're good, I like you, you're the man, okay? And then I don't push to say, let's do this. If I don't push to a close, right? If I don't make somebody get the book, do I help them? Impossible. Impossible to help anybody if they don't get the book. I don't help by somebody by writing a book. I don't help anyone by putting a book on the shelf. I help someone when I'm like, get the book, dude. I'm in an airport. True story. I'm in JFK. I'm walking through the airport. I don't know how many of you saw that JFK flight that got down by birds. Any of you saw that? Bunch of black birds hit the right engine of a 757 out of JFK, and they had to do an emergency landing. I'm the guy that videoed that. Okay? So the point is, I'm going through JFK right before that. I walk through JFK. This book is in the bookstore. A guy picks the book up, Closer Survival Guide. Who would pick that up? Salesperson. He turns it over. What's he looking at? He's looking at the price. I said, hey, pal, let me tell you something. I walked up to him. Attention. I said, pal, let me tell you something. If you're going to make a decision on the 30 bucks, you'll never be a millionaire. Ever. In your lifetime. <laughs> in fact, three lifetimes. With, with hyperinflation, you'll never be a millionaire. Wh why do you say that? Because you're worried about 30 bucks. Sure I did. I signed the book first. I'm going to sign this for you. See, that's where I closed him. I didn't close him when he went to the register. I closed him before then. You don't buy a book for 30 bucks, dude. You don't come to these programs for whatever it costs. You didn't come here for the 500 or 900 it costs you. What'd you come for? I buy a book. I'm looking for a million bucks in here, 10 million, 100 million. I'm looking for that billion dollar idea. I'm looking for that motivation, that excitement. I'm looking for that encouragement to push me into the marketplace so I can use my gifts. How many of you have potential greater than the potential you're using? Good. It is your ethical obligation. It is your duty and your responsibility to fulfill your, to fulfill your potential. That's your obligation. Okay? Highly successful people are not doing it for their money. If you talk to them, if you get intimate with highly successful people, you're going to find out they can't spend the money they have now. If we're talking about money. They have a potential and they feel like they're right here. You know, if we could talk to Steve Jobs today, I'll bet Steve Jobs would say, never fulfilled the gap. This is what drives you. Would you agree? This is the ethical thing. The ethical thing to do is to push. The ethical thing to do is not to get my book in the store. It's to make sure this guy that looked at it, touched it, got close to it, brings it home. My next step would be to make sure he reads it. The step after that would be, did you understand it? See, I don't want him to give me $30. I want, I want to give him a million if that's my intention, I can close the deal. But you got to know the rules of closing. First, selling is not closing. You know, m mentors of mine like Brian Tracy and Tom Hopkins, I've studied for years. I love these guys. But the truth is they mix two arts into one, and they shouldn't be. Selling, selling is one thing. 
presenting, promoting, marketing, building value. Closed in a transaction is something completely different. Would you agree? I already sold the real estate when we had the meeting with the three real estate agents, a couple of accountants, and the principal. When they come into the room, man, $72 million is a lot of money. You guys knew that before we came here. We going to do this deal or not? We going to do it or not? Because I don't have any money left to give you. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't have come here if I thought you were looking for a discount. See, what, I'm, what am I operating with? They came to that meeting knowing the price. Knowing the price, I know they think it's worth more than that, regardless of what they tell me. How many agree with that? They wouldn't agree to this meeting if they weren't looking to the future for that piece of property. You understand what I'm saying? I need to fix my teeth. It's $14,000, okay? Oh, my God. No, 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 no. What you, what you thinking about right now? You need to be thinking about your teeth. That's what you need to be thinking about, not the money, okay? You're not getting, look, you're not going to get the, the teeth, the job you need without spending $14,000. It's an investment in your future. So you've got to close the door on this price thing. Number two, closing is for them. It's not for you. Me closing her on those teeth is for her. It's not for the company. How many believe this? We get $14,000. That $14,000 will be gone faster than her teeth will. She's going to have these teeth for a 1,000 years. She'll be dead in a box and still have those teeth. Right? Number three, no value until the close takes place. There is no value exchange. Okay? You need, really need to understand this. Closers are not a bad thing. Shutting a deal down is not a bad thing. In fact, until you close, until you get somebody to say yes to you and give you money, you have not been a value to them. Hey, what'd you do with that client today? Well, I, I informed him on the product. How many of you got people like this? Oh, I did a great job. They like you. They love me. Did you close them? No. <laughs> then you didn't do anything for them. I go to Best Buy, and the guy tells me all about whatever the, the camera, and he doesn't shut me down. Did he, did he give me anything of value? Did he? I spent an hour with the guy. He told me all about cameras. What's the exchange? The time he spent with me, Psh, I could have done that with my daughter. I don't need you spending time with me. I need you to finish me. I need you to make sure this product goes home with me. Would you agree? If you think this product is a great product, then make sure it goes home with me. Insist that I take it once you got my attention. Even if it requires you to get criticism and even some level of, Arr! I hate your guts for a second, and then they buy. How many have seen people actually go through that? Come in, show an interest, you got their attention, they start to criticize you, you guys took too long. Then they hate you, you've taken way too long, and then they're buying from you. Anybody in the room ever had that experience? Good, repeat it. The woman that I'm married to wouldn't go out with me for 13 months. I lived right here in La Jolla, I lived here for 12 years, left my home here, sold it to go find my wife in L.A. I met her the first night I was in L.A., I went up to her, I pitched her, hey, I'm the best guy in the world, okay? Turned her off completely. Good, I'm already at step two. <laughs> now I gotta get her to hate my freaking guts, okay? See, look, man, I found a target. I found the girl that I wanted, right? I found the girl that I wanted. I don't lower targets. I'd blow my brains out before I lowered my target. I tried lowering targets, it doesn't work. Here's the target, don't lower the target. That's my target. I got to accomplish the target. I'm going to increase activity until I hit the target. If I got to go through criticism and hate, fine. 13 months, I called her twice a month for 13 months. Her friends called me, Grant, you're, you're starting to stalk her. I'm like, it ain't stalking if it works. If it works, we're going to have babies. Okay, number four, objections are not objections. Most of you have been taught that it's an objection. The price is too high. The payments are too high. We never make a rash decision. These are not objections. They're complaints. I never, ever treat an objection as an objection. I handle the complaint. Man, your price is too high. I agree with you. Sign right there. Everybody try this. I agree with you. 
No, I didn't say it like that. I said, I agree with you. Sign right there. Man, 14 grand's a lot of money for teeth. I'm with you. Everybody try this. I'm with you. Sign right there. See, I don't handle the objection because it's not an objection. It's a complaint. Oh, my gosh, man, it's really hot outside today. Hold on. Let me call God and see if I can fix that. Do you, why, why do you try to handle everything? My wife says, before she's my wife, she tells her friend Erica, he's too short. Okay, what else did he say? What else did she say? He's not my type. What else? He's a business guy. What else? He's too conservative. Okay, when are we going out? When am I going to finish this? Okay, let's roll. Dude, who are you? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't get distracted by your complaints because I'm willing to go through the criticism. You ever seen an ugly guy with a beautiful woman? Anybody in the room ever seen an ugly guy with a beautiful woman? Some of you in the room are like, yeah, that's me. She, she, I got one right now, damn. Good for you, man. Get some teeth. Okay, number five. Number five here. Price is a myth. Price is a myth, okay? You need to firmly understand this concept. Price is a myth. These are five of 20 rules that we teach on closing. Price is a myth. It's a myth. For every one of you in a room that's on a budget, if I was closing you on my product, and you said to me, but I'm on a budget, how many of you hear that every day? What do you know about a person that says they're on a budget? N need more income? What else you know? Good, I agree with that. What else do you know about them? Not selling enough? What else do you know about them? There's something else you know about them. They got money? And what else do you know about them? Say again? No, their budget's already broken. They came to you with a broken budget. So what do you know about somebody that's already got a broken budget? Do they buy from everybody but you? Everybody. You get it? So I'm in a close, and the guy's like, dude, that's more than our budget. Sign right there. Well, what do you mean sign right there? Dude, you, you, how'd you get over budget? You were over budget before I got here. I'm not the problem. <laughs> Right? I'm taking a guy out of, I'm, I'm, we're selling a guy a house, okay? His new payment's going to be four grand. His old payment's 3200 And we have him approved by the bank. And him and the wife are like, oh, we, we, we can't even afford what we're paying now. What do I know right now? Look, if you can't afford either one of them, get the one you want. <laughs> See, because I stay logical. I stay logical in the clothes, okay? You want to write this down. Stay logical and unreasonable. Stay logical and unreasonable. There's a difference between being logical, okay, and emotional. You don't want to get emotional in the negotiations. I don't get emotional with people. I stay logical. Look, sir, ma'am, if you can't afford either one of them, you can't afford the 32, you can't afford the 4,000, get the one you want. How many agree that's, that's a survival, more survival than staying in the one they can't afford? Maybe if we move the family into the house they really deserve, maybe their income will come up. Okay? You're sitting there, you're selling, trying to sell a guy a marketing campaign, but your campaign's more than the guy I've been using. Dude, the guy you've been using had not gotten you the results you want. Okay? You know why? Because he's not getting enough money from you. His program's a grand, my program's 10 grand. His program's month to month, my program's two years. You know what the difference is? I know how to get results, and he's a freaking amateur. He's an amateur. If he wasn't an amateur, you wouldn't have let me walk in your freaking office today. You've met him, and you've met me. You know there's a difference. I'm going to get you results. Sign right there. Who are you? Man, I wish my people could do what you do. Admiration. I may agree with that. Like, when I'm in a selling situation, I want them to want to hire me, not buy from me. I want to penetrate past, I want to penetrate past the transaction and get into the relationship. The decision phenomenon, okay? Number one, the buyer decides to take action. You got to know this. There's a phenomenon in every sales transaction. The buyer decides to take action before anyone ever asks them to buy. 
Just think about your own life. When you went to buy something, you were at Macy's or Nordstrom's. How many would agree you found something on a rack and you're like, I'm buying that before anybody was involved. In fact, the person, when the person got involved, they actually slowed down the process. The person at Macy's could have walked up and said, you're looking at something. Have you made a decision yet? Yeah, I'd like to take this home with me. Is that possible? But what happens? They add time to the process because they never go for the close. This is called the decision phenomenon. Ask the customer, have you made a decision yet? Might be your opening line when you go in to present to somebody, even before your presentation. Have you guys made a decision yet? Is there any chance that somebody agreed to an appointment for your presentation and they've already agreed? They've already, they've already decided to do business with you. Is that possible? Good. But you know what? I gotta do my presentation. I must build value. You don't have to build value if I'm closed. Right? I'm in a Porsche store up in Westlake, California. I find this car I want, this Panamera. I'm like, dude, I love that car. Let's go for a ride. I don't want to ride it, dude. I want to buy it. I don't want to touch it. I don't want to sit in it. I don't want to hold it. I don't want to stroke it. I want to tear it up. Let me write a check, and I'm going to take it home, and I'm going see, to see what I can do to freaking just tear this car up. And you can't be with me. We, I got to show you the car. I got to demo it. No, 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 bro, you need to take my money. Take my money and let me get out of here. Okay. Are you willing to do, as we come to a conclusion here, are you willing to do whatever it takes to get somebody's business without lowering your price? A client tells me recently they want me to fly out and speak to their company. I tell them what my fee is. That's ridiculous. I said, no, man, let me tell you what ridiculous is, okay? First of all, I'm not charging you to speak. I'm charging you to fly all the way to Baltimore and all the way back. And then I need tools now to justify why I'm worth that much money. Everybody agree? First, I know he's got the money. He is the decision maker. It won't break his company. I'm going to help him more than the money he's going to give me, but I need some gimmicks, some tools to show him why my price is what it is. Can you roll that video? I gotta go to work. Why don't you want me to go to work, huh? I gotta go. How much love do you have for Papa, huh? You don't even want me to go to work? I'm gonna go finish recording this program. If you're not first, you're last. Okay? Can you smile? Tell everybody, tell me, Papa, it's all right to go. Say, it's all right to go, Papa. You want a banana? Yeah. Okay, I got to go, buddy. No! No? You love me that much? You don't want me to ever leave? Huh? Tell everybody hi. Can you tell everybody hi? Say, I don't want my papa to go. I don't want my papa to go. And then say, <laughs> who let the dogs out? Huh? You want to go see Mickey Mouse? Sh say, tell Mickey hello. Okay, give me a kiss. I love you, okay? <laughs> I gotta go, buddy. That sits on YouTube. That's it. Thank you. That sits on YouTube. That's Sabrina, by the way. That sits on YouTube, and I use it with clients, okay? In the last 24 months, we've dropped about 700 videos on YouTube. Two today. Every day, we're just dropping video. All the videos, me. I'm talking to people. I'm giving people information. What am I trying to do? Get attention. I can then store that on YouTube for no cost. I can store it on YouTube, and what can I do? I can store it there, and I can use it when I need to. That URL on that video, just do uh, crying baby clothes. <laughs> Search crying baby clothes on YouTube. That's where you'll get the information. Folks, what I want to tell you today is this. Become a professional at selling and closing a transaction. Your business depends on it. Your clients depend on it, okay? Selling is not a bad word. Go to India. Go to China. They love salespeople there. Why? Because they know they can't create a middle class without it. The middle class has been created in America. Now it's being destroyed. It's being destroyed. It's being literally pulled out from underneath you right now. 
You don't want to stay in the middle class. You need to get above it. That is the only solution to what's happening in America right now. You need to get above the game. These one percenters that are so supposedly hated, look, you want to be in the top 20% of the earners in the United States. It will be the only people over the next 10 years that are safe, I promise you. So we put a couple of packages together for you. It's all my books, audio. I might need some help on this, Jessica. And then I'm going to give you, we got a free gift to give you at, at the end of this break. There's two packages we put together for you. My books. No, no, no. Jared, where you at, buddy? There you are. Okay. We put two packages together for you. One is my book and audio program, Selling and Closing. They're separate arts and audio. This program right here has a 126, I promise you it'll be the best closing program you have ever listened to in your lifetime, okay? There's eight hours of information, 126 closes, and this goes over 57 fundamentals of selling anything to anyone. These two packages on my website by themselves are 1100 bucks. We're doing the books and the audio for... Three ninety-seven. They're helping me out. Now, what we did in addition to that was we took my other two books. This is a book on prospecting. If you're not first, you're last. This is a New York Times bestseller. The original title of this book was Don't Be a Little Bitch. <laughs> but the publishing company wouldn't go with the title. How many of you think that was a better title than If You're Not First, You're Last? Come on. And bitch is not a neg that's not a curse word, by the way. I looked it up in the dictionary. It, be it means don't be a whiner. And you know what? They got a lot of whiners going on in this, in this economy right now. And this book is called the 10X Rule, okay? This book has actually outsold this book. And it's about how much effort, it's about domination, how much effort you have to use to actually get your product or service or your name or your brand into the marketplace. I use this book, the concepts of this book, to get a TV show. And I didn't know anything about getting a TV show. Zero. I didn't have one connection in L.A. or New York and got a TV show using the principles of that book. Also, we included the, the audio programs for both of those and a 13 D, uh, 13 segment DVD program. This is a $3,000 program online. 13 different DVDs. You get the books, the audios, the DVDs, and the price, and I only have 20 of these, is... No, your product. $897, okay? This is normally, this normally se uh, uh, sells for $4,200. So I got 20 of them, 20 of each program. Once they're gone, they're gone. Thank you very much for having me here today. God bless you. Have a great, great 2012. Thank you very much.